Hey, Steve Mignogna here doing the Junkyard Crawl at a private stash in New England, brought to you by High Octane Classics in Auburn, Massachusetts. Now, there used to be a saying, an advertising slogan, when better cars are built, Buick will build them. Well, that was certainly the case in 1964 with the Electra 225 or 225 six window hardtop. More on that six window stuff in just a second. Now, 1964, of course, was uh, the year that uh, Buick made 425 cubic inches out of its 401. And we see right here on the hood of this thing, an air cleaner. It's round, has a single snorkel, and a circular hole. So this one we know is sized for the Carter AFB four barrel carburetor that would be on top of the 425 under the hood. Now here's the thing. If you look at the graphic, it says Wildcat 445. What's that about? This is 425 cubic inches. What's that? Well, Buick was in the habit of not advertising horsepower or cues, but rather torque. The 425 four barrel made 445 foot pounds, and there's a dual quad version which made 465 foot-pounds of torque? Yeah, that was called the Super Wildcat 465. Now, the thing with Buicks is that they had rather small nail heads, if you will, the valves were small, and they used fairly high lift and duration specs on the camshaft to make up for the poor flow of the heads. Now, it wasn't poor flow. Racers don't like them, although don't tell that to TV, TV Tommy Ivo, but for general passenger car use, Buick wanted high velocities, low RPMs, maximum torque, and so High lift, high overlap, small valves, nail head formula, and that's why they came up with Wildcat 445s. Now, is the engine still here? Drum roll, please. Oh. Okay, no motor here. Now, this is a little bit weird. Of course, it does have the mandatory power uh, drum brakes. We'll get to those in a second. The single circuit right there, no dual circuits till 1967. Although no air conditioning on this one, kind of weird for a, a high zoot six window. Electra 225, and of course, these are also known as the uh, deuce and a half, the Electra deuce and a half. Uh, and here we have here, kind of cool, uh, Oilsum motor oil can cut in half. And of course, Oilsum, I believe, Worcester, Massachusetts. Yeah, the white Bagley company, Worcester, Mass, Oilsum. Now, here is something kind of cool right here. Let's close that hood. Oh, yeah. This is Buick 1964 full model line. Electra 225 convertible. Beautiful car that is, right? Well, let's look here inside. And let me know, Shane, if the, sun, if the sun is biting us or not. I can move this around if there's a sheen. But anyhow, here are the bodies available. Now, here at the top, you see here the four-door sedan with six windows. See that right there? The back has that big open-air look down the bottom. This is the basic four window hardtop right there with a more closed rear window and a smaller B pillar. So again, for an extra $67, for, in other words, 4,261 bucks, you got this thing here, but that roof line makes this a very special car. In fact, of the 52,566 Electra 225s built, only 11,663 were these more elegant looking uh, four-door six windows. Now, the cool thing about this, let's take a peek here. Here's the Wildcat for 1964. And those beautiful, uh, they call these the, uh, the, the, the styled steel wheels, beautiful looking stuff right there. And again, the Wildcat came standard with 325 horsepower. Uh, and uh, here's more Wildcat advertising, beautiful stuff. The excitement, go parachuting if you're a Wildcat owner, sure. Uh, we look in here further and we just see the bucket seat interior. But the most important thing in here is engines. And what do we have here? Yeah, look at this. Okay, we go to the right. Here's the Fireball V6 right here, 225 cubic inches. And we know that GM sold that engine to Kaiser and they use that in Jeeps. GM bought that engine back in the 1975 and put it back into production where it eventually became the Buick Grand National engine. Next to it, of course, is the Wildcat 310. It's a 300 cubic inch engine with two barrel and 310 foot pounds. Next to it is the Wildcat 355. Again, 300 cubic inches, but with a four barrel and 355 cubes. Next to it, the Wildcat 445, which is a 401, and then of course the Wildcat 465, which is the 425, and then to the very far left, look at that, the Super Wildcat, and look at the bottom, it says Super Wildcat, strictly tailored to meet the demands of the performance lovers. This Super Wildcat is 425 cubic inch engine with two four barrel carburetors and a high performance camshaft. The horsepower is 360, available at extra cost. Equipment on Riviera Electra 225 and Wildcat models. This mighty engine belongs among, among the kings of the road. Even at highway speed, it's merely loafing along. Reserve of power to counter any emergency. But there it is. So again, this one had the single four barrel Wildcat 445, which I guess is actually a a 401, pardon that. Now the grill on this, 
is very heavy. We need every, every one of those 445 foot-pounds to move this car. This is a metal grill. It's cool to see the original Guide T3 headlights. Of course, we know that Guide is GM's lamp division. T3 stands for tilt down and out three degrees. And these things are classic for never burning out. And it's possible these are the original headlights for this car. Or whoever had this car went to the dealer to have them replaced by dealer parts, GM stuff, Guide T3s. Now, getting back to the brakes on this, look at this. This massive brake drum, it's a 12-incher, that's not been painted. This is actually aluminum. And the thing of it is, as the 1950s unfolded, American cars got to be two tons and then almost three tons. And Buick, well, they were one of the first to address the fact that the brakes just weren't cutting it. So in 1959, actually 58 on the full-size Limited, Buick released aluminum brake drums. Nobody else in the industry did it. Lincoln did it in 61, I believe. But this is a Buick thing. Uh, 1959 through 1969, front drums, massive aluminum structures on all full-size Buicks. The crazy thing is, the muscle car Buicks of 1960, 65, 67, 68, the GS 400s, they came with a nine and a half inch iron drum. They never used the big drums on the GS 450 or the GS you know, 400 muscle cars. They should have, you know, but again, they had them in the parts bin, but this is the massive aluminum drum brake that Buick was known for back in the day. And also these were classic with hot rodders who would adapt them to 32 Fords and all kinds of other stuff. Here are the Buick Ventiports, and this being an Electra 225 top of the line, there's four of them. And of course, these arrived in 1949. I believe a fellow named Nichols at Buick was a stylist who brought these into the picture. And of course, Buick used these on pretty much all of their cars as a styling cue in various ways. They weren't always round, but when you saw four, it was a top level car. Three meant it was a lesser car. There were never five or two. It was always three or four. Now inside this, we'll trade spaces, Shane, go around me. Uh, and by the way, here is that six window body style right here. The glass continues all the way down the back. And again, without a thick B pillar here, it gives the greenhouse a more airy, elegant look. You know, really a beautiful design. And again, with these windows down, there's no B pillar here. This is just wide open. So it's a big four door, but it has the feel of a convertible. So you know, have your cake and eat it too. Now inside, the standard bent seat, of course, Electra 225, and that right there, that is first appearance for the GM Turbo 400 three-speed automatic. 1963 would have been a, a super turbine, not as, not as good. And that same basic tranny right there was used in SS396 Chevelles, and pretty much it was GM's go-to heavy-duty uh, automatic transmission. But it appeared first in 64 in big Buicks, certain Cadillacs, and here we see it inside this car. Uh, this car is luxury and personified, of course, power windows. Uh, got a radio and, uh, you know, very uh, personal luxury theme here. A massive car, too, by the way. And here's something right here that's kind of cool to look at. Now, we all know that Motor Trend has been an icon since 1949, and they never make mistakes, with one exception, canceling Roadkill's Junkyard Gold. Just saying. But anyway, here in Motor Trend, right here, June 64, we can see a nice test of a variety of cars, the old Chrysler, a Dodge Dart, and yeah, there's the Buick Wildcat right there taking up the middle spot. Now, this article is interesting because they test two Wildcats, and of course, Wildcat was built on similar bones to this massive Electra 225, but these were kind of Buick's personal luxury cars. And here on the left, it says here, Mildcat had wheel spin problems without pause attraction rear axle. See the tire spinning the right rear just going up in smoke. On the right hand side, Supercat showed excellent acceleration and upper speed. Pause attraction kept spin at minimum. But what's a, what's a Mildcat? What's a Supercat? Well, the next page tells us, and we can see here, they were both Wildcats with 425s, but the Supercat has the dual quads, and there's the chrome plated air cleaner, the dual Carter AFBs, the aluminum valve cover, which was part of that. Uh, Wildcat 465 motor, Super Wildcat. Down below is the Mildcat, so to speak, 401 cubic inch with a single four barrel carb. And again, a lot of uh, options. You can see air conditioning and stuff. But again, these, uh, these big Buicks like this were classics. The sad thing is, you know, I'm, I'm 58 years old here in 2022, and I remember these cars in the 70s were gas hogged. Nobody wanted them. They were just basically cars that people used in demolition derbies or traded in for a Honda Civic or a Volkswagen Rabbit. Because, you know, when gas got to be a buck a gallon, you know, this could break the budget. But around the back of this, we can see here, just massive full car, full size styling. And something kind of weird about Buicks is they had their own wheel. Now over at Chrysler, you know, Dodge, Plymouth, um, even Chrysler, not Imperial, they all use the same basic stamped wheel made by Kelsey Hayes. Well, General Motors, each division generally had its own engines, uh, its own body skin, and also its own wheels. This is kind of weird. Buick wheels in the full size cars 
Here's one right here. This is not seen on a Chevrolet, not seen on an Olds or a Pontiac. Buick had its own unique sort of dish looking wheel, kind of weird. These tabs right here are kind of a recessive gene. These would have been for the basic LeSabre with the poverty cap. Meanwhile, of course, Electra 225 would have a cover on it, but these wheels are specific with this dish look right here to full size Buicks of the 1960s. And why that is, I don't know. But anyway, on the rear, Electra 225, and that has nothing to do with the engine. There's no Chrysler Slant 6 under the hood of this one here. But again, 1964 vestigial fins in their final appearance right here. Uh, again, 1950, uh, 50s, of course, Buick would have much more aggressive looking tail fins. But uh, here we have it, Electra 225. All of this is metal. There's no plastic on this thing. And um, kind of, you know, this is when full-sized American cars truly were big, brash, and bold. And European drivers used to wonder, how on earth do those Yang tanks even fit on the road? Well, European roads were narrower, not as many highways as you might find here in the States. So these cars were unique and specific to American driving conditions, where you might drive for three hours going through Oklahoma, or even 10 hours, nothing you'd find in, in Europe. So these were very special cars for a very special country. So uh, to learn more about these cars and, and more, uh, come back tomorrow here on the Junkyard Crawl. We'll be here every single day. Ring the bell, subscribe, and we'll see you tomorrow with more Junkyard Crawl.